okay <coughs> welcome back dear students <coughs> in this video uh, we will be learning a filtered byte streams uh, these filtered byte streams are actually kind of wrapper uh, stream when i say wrapper stream i mean uh, they are not associated with the, uh, an actual source or destination but they are actually associated with uh, another stream and the reason why you would like to have a wrapper on an underlying stream is performance optimization. You will usually use filtered byte stream to improve performance of read and write operation. Uh, you can see its, its constructor, it has got a file output stream, filter output stream. You can see in uh, constructor it accepts another stream. It means that uh, this filtered output stream will be wrapper on another output stream. And similarly, for filtered input stream, and a constructor accept another uh, you know object of input stream so this will be a wrapper on another input stream right there are three uh, popular buffered byte stream one is buffered in output stream then buffered input stream and then pushback input stream and this buffered output stream i mean it usually improves performance of file output stream or any other output stream but if say for example you are opening a connection to file by using file output stream so for writing one character you are actually performing a write operation which means from your program to the uh, physical file and this becomes even more difficult if your file is remote it means that uh, for writing one character you are performing a very expensive operation of writing to a file but if you wrap a uh, file input stream inside uh, buffered output stream it means that uh, the writing process will not take place uh, uh, from program to the disk but only one time a write operation will take place uh, when you are flushing so inside this buffered output stream you've got a very special method which is called flush and only when you call flush then a write operation will take place between program and file otherwise all these characters which you are writing to buffered output stream uh, they will be written to the local buffer, the buffer which is, which is created inside the program. So the advantage of buffered output stream uh, wrapping it over on other stream is the uh, performance optimization, is performance improvement. Right, we'll see example and then you will be clear. When you are using buffered input stream, you have got a very a fantastic uh, method which is mark and reset, which means that while performing a read operation, uh, you can uh, put a check mark where you are at the moment because usually when you perform read operation uh, the cursor moves uh, one step ahead every time when you perform read operation but if you want to apply a mark a kind of highlight where you actually read uh, maybe a character of your interest then you can uh, highlight it by uh, applying a mark and then you can also use reset to reset the mark. We'll see that these two methods are quite helpful uh, in uh, doing a lot of tasks in, in programming. I'm sure that when you will be dealing with uh, your projects, you might be in needing uh, these type of extra efficiencies uh, inside uh, reading and writing process. Right, uh, I think when you see an example, uh, you will get an idea why a preferred input stream is important. Here is an example. I have taken this example from the book. Uh, you see, we have got a string S, this is, which has this uh, overall, uh, you know, text. This is a n percent copy and semicolon. You know, this is actually a, a kind of symbol for uh, this character, right? This is actually a symbol for this copyright character. Um, now, when you read one character at a time. Uh, you are not sure if it is a copyright symbol because copyright symbol means and copy and then semicolon right so this should be translated into copyright symbol but when you see this uh, and this should not be translated to copyright symbol now when you are reading one character at a time you don't know what will be in future right so you would like to apply a kind of highlighter here you would like to apply a kind of uh, 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 mark here and you can do it if you are having buffered input stream right so see what we are doing we are having this uh, uh, byte error input stream uh, the source for byte error input stream is buffer this is same way as we did in the previous uh, 
uh, example right and then i say integer c will be reading one character at a time and then mark is equal to false initially it is false now i'm using try with the resource so we have got try we say buffered input stream a is equal to a new buffered input stream and this input stream is going to be opened on underlying byte input stream right as i told you earlier uh, the buffered input stream and buffered output stream are kind of wrapper so here we say that we are going to open buffered input stream on another stream and that stream is n and remember this byte input stream is actually associated with the buffer which is actually having all these characters right now what is our task our task is when we see this combination we would like to produce a copyright sign uh, which is actually this sign right and for all other combinations we will display them as is so this should be replaced with the copyright sign but this should not be because this really is not the copyright sign right now in order to accomplish this task we need to have a mark capability a mark capability that actually tells us that we have read and right and then we see if we encounter semicolon then we will uh, probably produce uh, uh, this copyright sign otherwise we will not right so here we say we read one character at a time while c is equal to dot read we are reading one character at a time and you know when it reaches minus one it means it is end of the stream so we will we read one character at a time we switch and see if this character is end then we say if mark is false then turn the mark on right when you turn the mark on you say this mark should be automatically turned off after 32 characters uh, or maybe you will manually unmark it right so here we say f dot mark for 32 character so this is the read limit of 32 character and then we say mark is equal to true which is our boolean right um, else if this is if it is not ampersand sign we just say uh, mark is equal to false right okay then when we reach to here and we say when we encounter semicolon and if mark is true it means that we have seen a and character and we have also seen semicolon character which means that we should system dot out dot print ln and this thing right for everything else we just display the character itself right and and then uh, if there is another character uh, if mark is true we uh, uh, turn it false and reset it because probably we have not seen the combination of uh, and and semicolon so we actually turn the mark false and then reset it right else display the character and, and for default we do nothing uh, if mark is uh, 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 false we turn it true and then simply display the character right so you can see here very efficiently we see we apply a mark when we encounter and 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 when we encounter semicolon and if mark is true we actually display this character because this character should be only displayed if we have got and and we have also encountered uh, semicolon if both of them are appearing uh, with the space of 32 character then we are displaying this sign otherwise we are not displaying this sign right the important thing is uh, we have underlying binary input stream on this binary input stream we are opening buffered input stream and we are using you know uh, this mark method inside the buffer input stream right uh, if i run this program you will see that everything else will be same but this is a and this will be converted to the copyright sign so we say this is a copyright symbol but this is not right if i run the program you will see the output Right, so you can see this is a this has been produced because of our logic copyright symbol but this is not so everything else is as is except and copy semicolon is converted to this copyright sign and we have been able to do this because we have got this mark function and we have got this reset function inside buffered input stream and we are able to do it because uh, when you are opening buffered input stream it actually maintains a local buffer and to that buffer you can apply mark and reset great <coughs> uh, after this buffered input stream uh, we also have buffered output stream uh, which actually i've got a very beautiful method flash uh, again as i told you earlier it is for uh, performance optimization um, uh, let's see one example 
are using buffered output stream with the file output stream. You can see here we have got buffered output stream. Its constructor says I will accept um, any object of uh, output stream, and file output stream is an output stream, right? And you can also maintain local buffer. The size of this buff buffer is operating system dependent, but usually it is one kilobyte to two kilobyte. And the good thing is this buffer will be automatically resized when it exhausts its memory, right? Okay, let us have one example of uh, buffered output stream, Java class, I call it buffer output stream demo, right? Now inside this, what I'm going to do, I say public uh, static void name string ARP, right? Uh, here I say string uh, I say message equal to hello world of structure IDA university right and then I say by uh, I say by right okay uh, equal to message dot get bytes right okay now i say file output string uh, file output string file output string equal to new file output string and i'm going to open it to a file on my local machine uh, book okay files uh, yes here inside file inside file I remove previously created file to eliminate in confusion okay delete so output is put is here right so I say right here file and then output dot txt okay uh, you know why this is an error we need to fix import if you want to fix import you do nothing just bring mouse here and click it okay 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 this is alt enter right so this is alt enter alt enter alt enter right so file output stream what is the problem now you know the problem the problem is it might throw uh, file not found exception so i need to keep it inside try block right uh, but i can also do this close exception right close uh, come on only method can close exception not the class right so i say close exception then it should be okay okay then i say try now inside try uh, i have catch say for example exception exception p Okay. Uh, system dot out print ln e right uh, here I can I should rather create file output stream also inside this try block so that its connection will be automatically closed right so file output stream then semicolon and then I create buffered uh, output stream right buffered output string equal to new buffered output string and i say this should be opened on file output string i'm opening it on file output string right so this buffered output stream uh, is opened on file output string it means that now all the right operation that i'm going to perform uh, they will not be character by character rather they will be written locally one character at a time and when I flush then buffer will be written to the actual file so say for example what I'm going to do I say I say for integer i equal to 0 i less than bytes dot length right i plus plus now I say now I say 
byte output stream dot write one byte at a time right so i write bytes at uh, i right so this is going to write one byte at a time now you will see that this write operation will actually not write anything uh, rather it will it will now it will write one byte at a time byte output stream and then i say flush now remember when you do this if you are doing it directly on file output stream it means that every time one character is actually causing a write operation from your program to the uh, disk file which is an expensive operation uh, if say for example your disk file is not available locally if it is somewhere else on the network then this is even more expensive operation right so obviously performance will be very low but when you are uh, wrapping your file output stream inside a buffered output stream it means that there will be a local buffer which will be created inside java program and whatever characters you are writing those will be written into that buffer and that buffer will be written to the actual file when you flush it right so when you flush whatever you wrote here it will be written to the uh, actual file and remember when you are closing a stream a uh, flush method will be called automatically so if i i can write byte output stream dot flush or i can also write byte output stream dot close this is also equivalent uh, uh, to call closing a stream but closing a stream will automatically call a flush operation but we are lucky because we have got this try with resource when you have got try with resource it means that when programs program ends automatically these streams will be closed and when streams are closed you know flush is automatically called right so uh, this should be automatically written uh, to the destination but remember this time we will not have uh, write operations to the file which are equal to number of characters but there will be only one write operation to the file so obviously it will improve overall efficiency of the program right okay let's run it when you run the program it should be writing to the output you can see here this is hello world of sakaraji university so it has actually written our whole file right but if you call um, if you want to be certain that flush has been called so you as a good practice you should flush manually as well right so if i run this program it will not have any effect because i was using try with the resource which means that in any case uh, when program ends your stream is closed and when a stream is closed as i told you earlier um, the java runtime environment before closing a stream will flush buffer output stream and when it flushes it means it will write the contents which are in the buffer those will be written to the actual destination and in this case the destination is a file right so uh um, you have not learned any new thing in this code i mean you might argue that come on uh, we were able to write say message by using simple file output stream why would i do a buffered output stream and uh, a kind of wrap file output stream inside buffered output stream the answer is well if you do not do that your program will be slow but i mean in this case you have got only about 100 characters but how about if you have got 5 gb text if you have got 5 gb text then for writing one character you are referring to the disk file obviously not a very good idea in that case you will see that buffer output stream improves performance dramatically so these wrapper stream uh, like file are like buffer input stream and buffer output stream they are more for uh, performance uh, optimization and giving you a local buffer that you can mark and then you can reset or you can flush right okay so this was the buffer input stream and buffer output stream i end my lecture here and when i come back i will be uh, discussing a uh, push back input stream thank you very much